Hello everyone. Uh, this is Gilius. I was wanting to show one of my guildies my Tal Rasha build, the way it works, what I can do with it, and I figure it might be helpful information for other people to see as well. I don't claim to be the best geared Tal Rasha wizard. Uh, certainly not. I haven't been spinning the hamster wheel long enough to get what a lot of people would consider best in slot and who have a lot more time to spend in this game than I do. But I wanted to go ahead and cover basically how the build works and and some of the talent selections and choices that I've made. And hopefully you'll get to see how this all synergizes together into some very, very nice damage numbers. So to start with, we'll look at the gear. I've only got five pieces of Tau Rashas. There are f I've still got a couple of set pieces on that I'm looking to equip off when I get uh, pieces to replace them. For example, I was running an Archon build before. I, I wasn't really all that happy with it, and I've started phasing that out with the Tal Rasha build, but I've still got a few pieces left over from when I was playing with that. Um, but basically, Tal Rasha's is an ability that just stacks, it stacks damage on you, uh, a, stamage, uh, a damage buff on you, and lands meteors every time you use a different class of abilities. And it's uh, Arcane, Cold, Fire, and Lightning. Each one of those will stack a buff up on you. It stacks up to four, which leads to 600% damage increase. And the, some of the abilities in and of themselves are very high damage dealing as well. And it, it, it goes together very nicely. In addition, I have the Focus and Restraint Rings which give me 50% increased damage when I use uh, an ability that spends a resource and another 50% when, when I use an ability that gives me resource. So now that we've looked at that in the tier bonuses, or the set bonuses rather, thinking wow, uh, we can look at the skills and how they play together into it. For my primary skill, I, I have Electrocute and typically you see some people use this as arc lightning. However, I have mine set to surge of power, so it'll give me arcane power when I hit an enemy with it. And this will cover the part of focus restraint where I gain 50% increase when I gain arcane power, or when I use an ability that helps me gain it. And it also covers the lightning portion of the Tal Rasha damage. For Hydra, I've got Mammoth Hydra. This puts up a very large fire hydra that spews paths of fire all over the floor. This is going to be your primary damage dealer when it comes to uh, your pr what your primary abilities can do. And if you can get the serpent sparker bonus, which lets you have two hydras up at the same time, it works really, really well. So this covers the fire portion of your Tal Rasha damage. Teleport covers my arcane damage it makes it where you deal a little arcane damage wherever you land to the enemies that are around it and it stuns them nearby this works out really well with the nemesis bracers because as soon as you spawn a set of enemies from one of the the buff conduits or whatever they'll spawn all together clumped up right on top of you and you can just teleport stun them all and unleash chaos this covers the arcane portion of your damage and then Blizzard is covers the cold portion of the damage. Now, in regards to the talent here, this is a little more flexible. You really don't want it to be lightning. It needs to stay cold. But uh, right now I have Frozen Solid because it gives me a little bit of a chance to... Uh, to add a little crowd control to it because then it will stick them in place which increases the chance that they will have a meteor land on them and you'll see how this works in addition I have ice armor this is strictly a survivability trait it does nothing for my damage in particular but it it gives me if I've been hit three times it gives me 60 percent increased armor which increases my survivability and the way this build works is that you are stuck in combat right up close with people a lot so having that little bit of armor increase when you get hit is very very nice uh, magic weapon this is just the standard wizard 
I want more damage output buff. No problem. Now you could, if you're feeling really ambitious, replace the ice armor with uh, the familiar, the spark flint familiar. But uh, you don't want to do that. It's best to stick with the survivability bon bonus of ice armor. And you're doing the damage you get out of this will work quite fine as it is. Uh, Illusionist is another is another survivability thing. If you take a if you're taking more damage than you anticipate, it resets your teleport. You can just pour it right back out of damage. And although you can only spawn an arcane meteor every few seconds, it allows you if you get in over your head to port back out to safety, so you can maybe start kiting a little bit if you need to. Unstable Anomaly, another survivability I trick. If you're in over your head and you're about to get killed, life. you don't get killed, you get a shield and blah blah blah. Um, elemental Exposure is another is another uh, big buff damage that that goes very well with Talrashes because it makes the enemies take more damage the more different types of damage you expose them to. So, because you have an ability from each set in Talrashas, if you get a, if you get a set of elites or champion elites that you've hit with teleport and Hydra and Blizzard and Lightning, they're taking 20% increased damage in addition to the the 100% damage that you're getting from Focus Restraint and the 600% damage that you're getting from the Talrasha build. More percents. Uh, Arcane Dynamo is also kind of critical in the Talrasha build. When you, when you use a signature spell, you build, you build stacks of insight. And after five stacks, the next spell that you cast with it will have 60% increased damage. And you want this for your Hydras. So I'll go, uh, I'll go over the method of doing this. For the cube, I haven't really built in a lot of my legendaries into the cube yet, but I did I did grab a few that I felt were crucial right now. I will add an armor power later. But I had to do the Ring of Royal Grandeur because I've only got five pieces of Tal Rasha right now and I wanted Focus Restraint. Done deal. The Serpent Sparker. The Serpent Sparker I got was rolled very, very weakly. I wasn't happy with it, but when the cube came out, I could absorb the sparker into the cube and set that as an ability that I can use with a weapon that I got a couple of days ago that I'm very very happy with. I got nearly I got nearly 50% more damage based on replacing this weapon alone. So, I've got a lot of crit and I've got a lot of critical hit damage. And again, it it leads to some very large numbers when you're talking about the 700% total that you've got and the 20% more that the mobs are taking all of these percentage buffs stack and it's it's a multiplicative stack so it becomes very very huge so I'm gonna go ahead and put these buffs on myself and do a greater rift so that you can see how the how the abilities work I'm gonna try I'm going to try a 34 rift. I've not gone up to this level yet, so it's probably going to be a little bit of a challenge here for me, but we'll see what happens and we'll go through it together. So to start with, put your buffs on yourself and you want to just shock stuff until you got that, the five stacks. So I didn't get to cover it because I didn't get to explain it. So you, you want to keep the in-between mobs, you always want to have these five stacks. And it's Teleport, Hydra, Blizzard, Shock again. You notice every time I'm done, I'm using the Shocker to build my stacks back up. Still now the Serpent, the Serpent Sparker buff allows me to have more than one Hydra up on the ground, but you never want to cast a Hydra without five stacks of Insight because the Hydra does so much damage and with the stacks of insight, it's doing that much more. So, teleport, hydra, blizzard, and shot. And you always want to teleport right into the fray, because remember, the teleport is, is causing your arcane damage, it makes a meteor land on them, and it stuns them briefly, so you can get right in the fray and be okay. And usually with most packs, they're dead almost before they have a chance to really do anything. 
I mean, you can see that meteor just landed for like 200 and something million damage. And you see down here, I've got the Talrasha buff stacked up to four. That's when you're going to be doing the most damage. You'll fall off. You can't keep it stacked to four forever. But generally speaking, as soon as it drops off, your teleports back off cooldown, and you can warp right back into it. So now I've casted a second Hydra, and they're dead. And I need to speed this up and stop talking as much, so I can actually try and clear this rift in time. But that's pretty much it. Teleport, Hydra, Blizzard, Shock. Teleport, Hydra, Blizzard, Shock. And it's phenomenal damage. And the, uh, I wish I could do that. There's that escape, teleport. Oh boy. When those meteors I'm land, it's wounded. so gratifying to just see everything explode. I must wait longer. Now I've been hanging out in Torment 7 at my gear level with this build, and it's been fine. This is coming close to Torment 8. Healing. So a little bit on the edge of my comfort zone. But uh, you know. Sometimes you gotta challenge yourself and see what you can do, you know? Alright, so I've got a pylon up here, and because of my Nemesis Bracers, I'm gonna get to spawn a new pack of elites right away and go to town on them, which helps a lot with the greater rifts because when you kill an elite pack, you get those orbs that increase your progress in it. But I wanna kinda clear the area first in case they wind up being something kinda scary. So. As soon as my teleport's off cooldown, teleport, Hydra, Blizzard, I'm so shock. I astound myself. Uh oh. Help me. The Hydra's last for 15 seconds, which uh, works very nicely, and if you do get in trouble, you can just kite and lay Hydras. Kite and lay Hydras and still teleport in to just to get some damage in there. So let's find more mobs. Whoops. Had to use it for not tell Rosh's there. Ah, oh, this is a dead end. Lame. Now, I've seen some people who Need went into, time. like, a Torment 10 and just destroyed everything. And I assume that they have some kind of weird, overpowered build, healing. but... Like I said, I'm not claiming to be, like, the Diablo Master. I haven't put in all this time, but... A friend of mine is wanting to experiment with the Tal Rocha build, so I thought I'd make this video for him to kind of show it off and see what it's going to like do. I wish I could do that. And you notice now, when I got in over my head, I just kind of teleported around, let the Hydras do their work, and everything's crazy. It's got to be really touchy if you're going to you push yourself like this. I need healing. Probably should have played it safe. Oh, well. It is what it is. As it is, I think it's doing okay. Got plenty of time. Now, what I did there was stupid. You don't want to just stand around in shock because you're you're not, especially if you don't have any stacks of the Talrasha build up, because then your just your regular shock doesn't do much damage. And if you just stand around shocking like that, you're just wasting a bunch of time. And an Eplum rift, that's okay. And a greater rift, not so much. Health returns. Uh, didn't see that coming, did you? Need more Ooh. time. Uh oh. I need healing. There was my my save myself explosion. We have now the Hydra. Yeah, the uh, the Blizzard is very good as well because if you can. 
because of the I have the blizzard that locks the enemies down um, for a few seconds. Especially if you can do that in a fire line, you, you increase the chances that they're gonna get they're gonna get caught by a meteor circle. And I'm sure you've seen a few of those. Here comes one. Um, but also, it kind of gets them off your back for a few seconds. Oh, there's a pile of here. Rush come on, pull down there it is. Help me. So there it is. A four million health elite dead in like four seconds. The damage you can do with this build is so insane. Ford in, watch the meteors fall and cackle as everything. Is Safety teleport. Freeze him in the Hydra. And dead. So you can kind of use you can kind of use the Hydras and the Blizzard for a little hurting and crowd control when you need it. You've got teleport to get out. So you've got a lot of safety buttons in here, even though it's uh oh. I died! As I'm talking about safety buttons, I died. I are a winner. Heal me. Good lord, these guys are hitting me hard. I'm healed. I'm ready yet. Yeah, so this rift is kind of showing me a little bit right now. I'm not quite ready for the game. Getting there, but not quite. Second Hydra. Held up my five stacks. Freeze them in there a little bit. Teleport again. Yeah. Such damage. Very death. Conduit pylon. You know what? Normally I would save this for the the tier for the greater red guardian. But I'm gonna use it now just so I can get the elemental because I want to show you what it can do. <laughs> or I could just die like a doof. The Rift Guardian has found you. Teleport, Hydra, Blizzard, Shock, 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 Second Hydra, Shock, Shock, Shock. You still need to dodge stuff from the Rift Guardians. They can still hurt pretty bad, as you saw. Okay, so that was alright. I love these laser beams. It's such a cool effect. But, uh... I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's not the best demo. I mean, I died twice, but hopefully that was enough to kind of show you how how the Tal Rasha build works, what it can do, and I'm very, very happy with it. For a person, I never thought I'd be the kind of wizard who just went in and just started wrecking crap, but I absolutely love it. So I, I will, returning to Tal. let's see what my time was on that rift. Your Vala is... 919. Not bad. I'll take it. So, have a good day. Oh, one other thing. Uh, one of the things I've been keeping an eye out for is... Uh, a gauntlet that allows your... Uh, Tasker and Theo. It's a gauntlet that allows your Hydras to attack 50% faster. And that is a pretty crucial element of this build that I have yet to find anywhere. Um, because this absolutely work with works with your Hydras, and with the Serpent Sparker on, or at least the buff on you, uh, you can spawn two Hydras, they're spitting half as fast again, and there's fire everywhere, there's meteors falling, it's glorious. So, uh, if you have any questions or comments or whatever, um, 
you know, feel free to drop it in the comments. Keep in mind, I don't usually do a lot of instructional videos like me, so if you feel like I was a big doof, whatever. I just made this for a friend, and you can glean what information you want from it, and I'll be okay with that. So I hope you have a good day, and I'll catch you later.